The SEC loses maybe the best class of quarterbacks in conference history. Included in that bunch is probably the most prolific when you look at the passing records. Aaron Murray at Georgia. And here to talk Bulldog football is one of our friends from SEC writer, Jason Mormon. Thanks so much for joining us, Jason. Hey, how you doing, Mark? I'm doing just fine today. I'm doing a little bit better than that Georgia football team health-wise last season. Really <laughs> ravaged by injuries. I, I tell you, I don't know that I've seen an offense that – looked to be that good on opening night against Clemson and had that kind of personnel at wide receiver, running back, the offensive line experienced, of course, Murray at quarterback, and most of it taken away from uh, Mark Richt uh, throughout the season, uh, specifically uh, in that Tennessee game. So that, that was a tough one, and that has to be the storyline of the 2013 season and going 8-5 and five were the injuries. Your highs and lows for Georgia football last season uh, before we dive into uh, the spring preview in regards to your overall impression of what uh, this team produced last season? Well, the, the, the highs and lows, I look at the highs for Georgia. You know, obviously the offense uh, was the key part of us even getting the eight wins we had on the season. Uh, big games we came up in early in the season facing the, you know, three top ten teams with Clemson, LSU, South Carolina in the first four weeks of football. Uh, big win over LSU. Uh, you know, Murray come back in the end to win that game. Um, offense looked great. Like you brought up, the the injuries were, if I had to say anything, between injuries and our defensive problems being the lows uh, for our season, uh, injuries just seemed to pile up, you know, especially with the Tennessee game. Um, you know, we wound up losing Gurley, uh, you know, from that before that game. He wound up hurting his ankle. Uh, we lost Marshall. Um, Malcolm Mitchell, you know, in the very beginning of the season, uh, in the Clemson game celebrating, uh, you know, he didn't play any of the season. Um, we lost Michael Bennett, Justin Scott Wesley, uh, I believe in the Tennessee game. Um, even Colin Barber, our punter, I think he even got injured in the Tennessee game. So, you know, it just seemed to mount up, uh, you know, and it just, uh, you know, that would be looking so good, especially looking back at 2012. Uh, you know, the 12-2 and two season we had, one win. Uh, you know, we needed that one win in the SEC Championship to play for a title. Turn around, 2013, the defense, we lost a lot of key, key players. Uh, you know, you're looking at losing people like Jarvis Jones, Al Ogletree, Bakari Rambo off the defense from 2012, and our defense just couldn't seem to get adjusted. A lot of key players, a lot of great talent, slew of talent on the defense, just couldn't get it together. And I think that was the biggest downfall for our year, uh, our defense, and then our injuries, you know, midseason with the, with the offense. So Murray goes down late in the season. Hudson Mason comes in. He will be a senior in 2014. Uh, 21 of 39 against Nebraska in the bowl game, uh, over 300 yards passing against the Huskers, even though the Bulldogs turned the ball over late in the game that uh, deprived them of a possible shot at winning the football game, and there were some other mistakes. They did move the football against the Huskers in the bowl game, uh, scored a ton of points against Georgia Tech to rally in that uh, closing win in the regular season. So your thoughts on the quarterback situation with Mason probably being the front runner? Well, I, I believe Mason will be the front runner. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's he's got a good arm. Obviously, they believe a lot in him. Uh, he come out there, he did, you know, he came in behind – uh, in, the, in the Kentucky game and uh, came in and finished up that game after Murray got hurt towards ACL. Uh, he came in in the Georgia Tech game, started off a little slow, but then come up with, you know, with two key touchdowns to help us lead to the win in that. Uh, in the Nebraska game, like you said, 320 yards uh, with the touchdown, just, you know, just seemed real slow. You know, the one time our offense came, our defense came up pretty good, our, our offense seemed to be our problem in that game. Uh, not sure if it was Hudson trying to get adjusted, uh, not having a lot of playing time, being on the big stage for the first time in his career. So um, looking, I believe he will be the starter next year. Rick's going to give him that shot. He's the senior. He's got the play in time this year. He come in with the offense a few times. He's got that supporting cast around him next year with the running backs, uh, with the receivers coming back healthy. Uh, there are a few people behind him, uh, you know, Bryce Ramsey, uh, freshman set this year. I think he was red-shirted. Um, you know, it was really top, I think he was a top five recruit in the nation as far as quarterbacks. Uh, looking at a spot, you know, if not next year, looking at the 2015 season coming after that, looking at being the starter behind Mason. So I look for, you know, any kind of games we get next year where we have a big lead, look for, to see a lot of Bryce Ramsey, 
Uh, we've got another good recruit uh, coming out of this year with uh, Jacob Park. Um, there's a lot of talk about him. He's considered to be the number five quarterback this year. Uh, you know, looked at as a dual threat quarterback. They, you know, they say he plays a lot like uh, uh, Aaron Murray played, which is a good thing. Not that he'll be the next Aaron Murray. You know, we, we'll wait and see. But um, Hudson Mason, I believe, will be the starter. We do have people behind him. Like I said, you've got a uh, 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 Phaeton Bowdy. He's a six-three, two-sixteen pound. You know, good uh, pocket passing quarterback. Um, looking at him, too. Uh, just a slew of talent, I believe. Now, Jacob Park is our only quarterback signee this year, um, you know, the, as far as all of our commitments uh, uh, in the recruiting class this year. But I think come 2015, we've got a good setup, you know, after Hudson Mason, you know, obviously next year being his senior season. Uh, like I said, I believe uh, Mark Rick will give him that shot. It'll be our starter all next year unless something, you know, just tragic happens. So Gurley goes down, he eventually gets back. Um, the season's lost from the standpoint of winning the SEC East at that point. Uh, he comes back, but he's never the same. He's hobbled up with the ankle injury, and even in the bowl game, made a great effort to try to just get out there and be something close to what he typically is, because we're talking about, as most people know, uh, most likely, especially with Jeremy Hill leaving, the best running back in the SEC and maybe the best in all of college football. Keith Marshall, as you mentioned, goes down against Tennessee as well. J.J. Green comes in, gives it a, gives it a great effort against the Bulls in, that game, in the uh, overtime win, 129 yards rushing in that one, followed up with 87 against Missouri. Uh, so th those guys are all back, although I, I understand the Marshall injury is extremely serious. Uh, let's look at the, uh, the rest of the offense in regards to, to who's coming back and, and who you lose uh, and what the situation could be for uh, next spring. Yeah, I think we're um, we're looking at a lot as far as our, you know, people, you know, holding the ball as far as our running backs, our wide receivers, you know, pretty much everybody should be there. Uh, you're looking at uh, Malcolm Mitchell uh, coming back next season, you know, healthy. He, he tore that ACL. We can get him back healthy. Um, Justin Scott Wesley, uh, Chris Conley, big, re big receiving tools that really made big impact plays and could be, you know, just could form a really super – wide receiver core next year in the SEC. Uh, as you mentioned, Gurley, um, around 1,000 yards. He had around 1,400 total yards with his receiving yards, 16 total touchdowns this year. Uh, looked at, you know, one of the Heisman candidates preseason this year. Everybody was talking about greatest running back in the nation, uh, especially SEC-wise. Um, and I think next year stays healthy. I think he'll be in that talk again. Everybody will talk about it. Uh, him and Marshall, uh, him and Marshall, are both you know juniors uh, coming up. So uh, look for them to still be the lead. You know, as long as Marshall gets healthy in time, uh, look for both of those still be the lead coming in. JJ Green, Brendan Douglas, both of them did awesome filling in for Marshall, uh, filling in for Gurley. Uh, another one, uh, you look at uh, Hicks, the fullback. Uh, he started off the season getting some playing time early in the season. After that, I think with all the injuries, you know, people not being healthy, I think they tweaked the offense a little bit with their running back sets and how they were moving the running backs around. He fell off with his playing time a lot. I think there was a couple of times where he wasn't 100% healthy also. Uh, I look for him to get some more playing time next year. The time that he did get in the game, he looked real good. Um, our offensive line, that's another thing that's going to be moving around. Uh, we've got some seniors moving on the offensive line. Um Will Friend, he's done a, a real good job coaching that, that set out there. But you've got uh, Canarius Gates, um, Chris Burnett, uh, David Andrews. They all started every game this season. Uh, Canarius Gates is a senior. Chris Burnett's a senior. Uh, you've also got Dallas Lee, another senior. He's a left guard. Uh, those guys will be leaving this year. And you're looking at um, people stepping up. You've got uh, John Thuse. Uh, he started the last six games of the season at right tackle. Uh, he was swapping that out with Colton Houston. Those two guys will be coming up and possible good starting st spots on the offensive line. That was the big key part of our offense this year. With all the injuries, they hung together. Uh, even Canarius Gates wound up hurting his ankle, I believe, in the South Carolina game, but never missed a start. Um, so they'll be piecing that together next year, too, filling out who's filling in for those starting roles uh, for the starters leaving on that. Um, our tight end spot, you got Arthur Lynch. Uh, 
you know, arguably the best tight end in the SEC this year. Uh, he'll be leaving out. Jay Rome came in with him, uh, came in with a lot of plays when Artie was on the field, and Artie got hurt a little bit, missed just a little bit of time. He didn't miss a whole bunch of games. Uh, Jay Rome came in. I think he only caught nine passes this year. Uh, they lost him, used him in a lot of the run game, uh, you know, quarterback protection and stuff like that. I look to see a lot more of him next year. Um, we've also got Hugh Williams, uh, a junior, um, coming in behind him. Jordan Davis, a freshman tight end. Uh, we've got a good recruit in uh, uh, Jeb Blazovich uh, coming up this year. Uh, he's supposed to be, I think he's like the number two, number three tight end in the nation maybe uh, is what they're looking at. I think that's with uh, Rivals.com, maybe ESPN 300, both looking at him that way. So I look to, I look to see our offense next year. Uh, be just as fine. Like I said, Hudson Mason will have probably the best supporting cast of offense returning maybe in all the SEC next year uh, with the run game, with the receivers coming back. Um, there's still going to be a lot of experience on that offensive line. So I look for our offense to do just as good this year, uh, just as good in 2014 if, as they were in 2013. You know, in 2012, I think they set the school record for uh, points in a game. They turned around this year and they were – just a little over that until the Nebraska game, and they fell off a little bit. Uh, and that dropped the average down to around 37, 37 points a game. Uh, they set the school record in 2012 at 37.8. So I look for next year to be just as good, especially with the running back talent. Uh, the coaches on the offense aren't going anywhere. So um, I would to see a lot, of, uh, a lot of big plays from the offense next year. All right, Jason, on to the defense. You outlined the situation in 2012 and losing all that NFL talent uh, to the draft. And then coming back in 2013, the offense was supposed to carry this team and was ravaged by injuries. So the defense looks to be in much better shape with all that young talent coming back in 2014. Wilson and Herrera had strong seasons. They were the one-two guys in regards to total tackles on the roster. Then you've got a guy at Jordan Jenkins, 12 and a half tackles for loss. Really strong there coming back. Uh, talk about the defense, who you lose, who's coming back, and uh, how you see the defense playing in 2014. Well, uh, I'm, I'm really, that's the most exciting part for me. Uh, you know, everybody knows, everybody looks at the offense, and we know what we're getting. We know what we had this year. We know what's coming back next year, and it looks so good. So it's not a real big part of concern for our offense, and, you know, unless people want to look at the quarterback situation. And uh, I've got confidence in the Hudson Mason. Uh, George has always done pretty good with quarterbacks, uh, you know, since in Mark Briggs' tenure. Um, my big thing is I'm so excited about this defense. Uh being so good next year, they, they weren't – they're not horrible players. They're not players without talent. Some of the most talented defensive players in the SEC, it's just like they just couldn't piece it together. Uh, I think a big change is coming with our defense. We lost every defensive coach we had on our staff this year. Uh, Todd Grantham went to Louisville. Uh, we lost uh, Chris Wilson, our defensive line coach. Our, he went to USC, um, our linebackers coach. Uh, Kirk Olivadotti went to the Redskins in the NFL. Um, Scott Lacato said he was leaving for personal reasons. So in comes Jeremy Pruitt from Florida State, uh, hoping to make a big impact, you know, one year at Florida State. And I've heard a lot of people say, well, he was working with Stoops' defense down there and Stoops' people. Well, actually, they, they had seven assistants on that Florida State staff they had to replace this year. And they also had eight starters on defense that they had to replace this year. So I look at that as a total – uh, Pruitt change, not somebody working with Stoops defense. These are players that weren't starting last year, coaches that weren't there last year, and they put the best defense in the nation together. Uh, you look at Pruitt's history uh, all the way back to high school, Hoover High School in Alabama. They played in three straight national titles in his time there. I mean, state titles, I'm sorry. They played in three state, three state titles his time there. They won the first two. They were ranked nationally those two years in the top ten. Uh, he leaves there, goes to Alabama as the director of player development, winds up making, making it on the coaching staff in Alabama. He's a defensive backs coach, uh, you know, two national titles at Alabama on the coaching staff there. And everywhere he goes, he wins. Titles everywhere, from high school, college now. You'll hear a lot of people, well, he's just in the right place at the right time. Well, maybe in one season or maybe even two seasons out of his career, but your whole career coaching, you're winning – that, that's not being in the right place at the right time. That's being a key factor in that element, I believe. 
like I said, the, the Florida State defense, Florida State's always been, you know, a good team. Uh, last year their defense wasn't nowhere near as good as it was this year. And he had to replace eight starters. And they just, you know, number one defense, just crazy. Now they get in the title game with Auburn, and they had a real problem holding that Auburn run game, but everybody had a problem holding that Auburn run game. So I look for big changes. Uh, they just hired uh, David uh, Scherer. He's the defensive coordinator from South Alabama. Uh, I don't think they've gave him a title yet as far as what his position will be on that coaching staff. But he also has ties to Pruitt from Hoover High School and from Alabama. Uh, he was a director of player development at Alabama when Pruitt got on the coaching staff as the defensive backs coach. Uh, he was at Hoover High School before Alabama. And uh, that's somebody that he has a chemistry with. He knows how they work. He knows how they deal with the kids. And I think that that means a lot. Um, I think maybe that's – you look at the coaching staff leaving Georgia uh, with Kirk Olivadotti, Scott Lactos. I think Chris Wilson and Olivadotti were looking for that defensive coordinator position. I think even Mark Rick said that after hiring Jeremy Pruitt, he was hoping that they would stay and that they would welcome – you know, he would welcome their return if they want to stay with the team. And I think that's – I think they're leaving not because they don't like Georgia or they don't believe in the future there. I think they're trying to build their own future as coaches do. Uh, everybody wants to move ahead. Everybody wants that promotion. And maybe they're trying to put more on their resume so they can get that. They've obviously done well in, in a little time at Georgia. So I look for a big change. That's going to be a big change with our defense. We have a slew of talent on the defense. Like you said, Rameek Wilson, he led the SEC in tackles. Had 133 total tackles, I think, this year. Um, Marlo Herrera, looking at Jordan Jenkins, you know, everybody was talking about filling in that Jarvis Jones position, taking over for Jarvis Jones. And then, you know, in comes Leonard Floyd also, the freshman linebacker, who had a big season as a freshman. Uh, I think, um, you know, six and a half sacks. He heard the quarterback 22 times, uh, 10 tackles for loss or so. Uh, our linebacker talent is just a slew of talent. It's just, it's just loaded. Uh, Josh Harvey Clemens, the safety, now he – you know, is looked at a key player. Uh, he missed the bowl game against Nebraska. Uh, they didn't really outline it then. He was uh, suspended for that. He's also facing a three-game suspension to start next season. So um, he's going to miss the opener against South Carolina, the, the SEC opener. So, But I still believe that talent in our defense, I just look for it probably to be top five in the SEC next year. I, I think it's going to be such a huge change. Ten starters return. Um, you know, we're the only person we're losing the defensive end Garrison Smith is, uh, you know, he'll be in the NFL draft. Um, he was a big key defensive end. He was a senior and, and just, you know, made a, made a real stout. He wasn't, you know, you look around at, at people with defensive ends in the SEC and he's always in that conversation. He's not the number one, number two guy, but it's, he's always the guy, Hey man, this guy, Hey man, this guy. Uh, and now that he's leaving, uh, like I said, there's 10 starters returning. He's the only guy we're losing. I think it'll be top top five defense in the SEC next year. Love the information on the defense and especially the insight you give us on the coordinator change with Jeremy Pruitt coming in from Florida State. That probably, as you well know, got more pub than any coordinator higher this offseason in college football. Jeremy Pruitt, of course, shaping that uh, Florida State defense that won the national championship. Regardless of how much talent was on that defense, uh, he put the pieces in place. So, Jason, we look at this Georgia football program, and from my perspective, from the outside, a, a top five to top ten program nationally. The resources are there. The recruiting base is there. Uh, winning football games, 10-11 typically in most seasons, eight and five last season, but we discount the injuries right there. Um, look at this program going forward. Mark Richt has been on the hot seat at times. It doesn't seem like that talk is there going into 2014, mostly because of the impressive 2012 and the 2013 that can be, again, disclaimed because of massive injuries. Everybody has injuries, but just crippling injuries, especially on offense. Uh, so where do you think the state of this program is right now and where the fan base is in regards to the expectations, trying to win that SEC championship that's uh, been a few years in the making? Well, I, I think the state of our – I think we're in a, in a perfect spot to have another run at it. Um, I think, you know, our fan base, you know, they – obviously pretty upset this season when they look back at 2012 and we were, you know, within five yards and one play away from playing Notre Dame for the national championship. I think they look at it and they're, you know, they're, they're let down. Fans are looking at it and they're saying, hey, man, how does this happen? We Aaron Murray came back. We had girl, we had everybody. 
you know, and then the, by the fifth week in the season, you know, we're losing over half our offense, half of our ball handlers are hurt. Um, and, you know, the defense itself couldn't get put together. So then everybody's calling for coaches and, hey, so-and-so needs to go. And, let's hire. and, you know, it just became a problem. Fans get so emotional. And they're fans. You know, this is what they do. When they're sitting and they're watching the games on Saturdays, they say, hey, man, this is, you know, they get all pumped up for it. They're not thinking about work. They're not thinking about what's going on around them. They're thinking about the game. and They're cheering. And then, you know, they're screaming. And I think they had a lot that they felt like they were let down with. Um, I think the Pruitt hire coming from Florida State and looking at his background gives fans a lot more to be excited about. I think a lot of fans feel like I do. I think they're real excited for the Georgia team next year. Um, I think that everybody's sitting there just waiting. Nobody, everybody can't, you know, they can't wait till August and September to get here and see how Georgia's going to do and get that first game against South Carolina and see what that defense looks like and how it's changed. I, I look at the, the state of the team as, as being in the best position, you know, imaginable. Mark Ricks probably will go down, I think, as, you know, one, you know, you always have Vince Dooley. I think he'll go down as one of the greatest Georgia coaches of all time. Uh, he's a great coach. I don't think he's – everybody, like I said, fans get really emotional and one of the first things they want to do is say, hey, this coach, you know, uh, I'm tired of seeing this coach. I'm tired of seeing this. When you when you face the adversity, especially they face this year, with all the injuries, uh, with trying to get that together, that's a hectic situation. It's a stressful situation. Coaches are on the sidelines. And not only is he having to coach these players, Mark Rick's having to coach his coaches – this stuff gets stressful, and they're all family. And, and Mark Rick's a great guy. You see him in all the interviews. Uh, you see all the videos about him, how he deals with people. He's just such a good-hearted, great. He always wants the best out of everybody. And so, so that's something hard to go through. You know, and as fans, a lot of times we don't think about that. All we want is that win. All we want is to win. And we don't care what's going on or how they have to do it. And, you know, obviously these programs are there, and they want to please the fans doing that. Um I think Mark Rick has a has a stellar uh, stellar season next year. I really believe that's coming. Uh, I look Georgia to be favored to win the uh, SEC East next year. Um, I think he'll give the fans a lot more to root for. Uh, with these coaching changes, we still have a few coaching changes on the defense we have to fill. Um, see where Pruitt puts people, uh, how he does with Shear, who just came in from South Alabama, how where he puts him, what he has him doing. Uh, I, I just I'm really excited about it. I think fans, even after the letdown, are now really excited with the changes coming. Yeah, those programs that uh, find the right guy and stay with him for 10 or 12 years, those are the stable programs in college football. We also see it in the NFL. Those teams, those programs in college football that turn over coaches, they're not winning. So is it the chicken before the egg? Do you win? And then, of course, the coach gets to stay. Or if, if you stick with one coach, does – do you build a stable situation? But I, I definitely am on board with what you have to say in regards to, in addition, Mark Richt off the field. He can go into a, uh, any house around the country and specifically in the South and look the parents in the eye and he's been a man of integrity. He, he carries himself the right way in every situation and has always been an upstanding guy. So uh, hopefully the wins follow. And I, I know that the, the 10 wins aren't always enough for Georgia fans, as you outlined there. He, they want that big SEC championship game win that they could have had a couple years ago. That's got to be excruciating. But they've been awfully close in past seasons. Of course, the 2017 was awfully strong. that beat Hawaii in the uh, Sugar Bowl as well. So Jason Mormon writes for SEC Writer, not only on Georgia football, but the entire SEC landscape. Uh, Jason, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, no problem, Mark. I really appreciate it.